Gracias de nuevo, Ricardo, y al Instituto por este foro uh, tan importante. I remember when the push started, more than a decade ago actually, to get us in the media to stop relying on left and right and focus more on democratic and anti-democratic. But while I of course think it's important for journalists to discern when a government or a political movement is authoritarian, I just don't buy into the idea of discarding right and left as identifiers for two main reasons. First, I still think they matter in terms of describing how the governments we cover govern, the valid philosophies each brings to the table, less government involvement versus more government involvement, fiscal restraint versus fiscal stimulus, and so on. They also matter in terms of how journalists explain power shifts. Why does a leftist like Gustavo Petro suddenly look uh, set to win the presidency in Colombia? Because the right-wing Uribistas screwed up. On the other hand, why did a, uh, an arch-conservative like Jair Bolsonaro win the presidency in Brazil four years ago? Because the leftist PT screwed up. But here's my second reason. It began to dawn on me that many people on the right and the left had a rather dishonest motivation for wanting the media to make this semantic shift to democratic and undemocratic. It was a way for each side to brand the other as undemocratic. People on the left wanted us to see the world through that binary lens as long as we understood the right was by default undemocratic. And people on the right wanted us to make the same bogus claim about the left. That's especially true when you're covering Latin America. Everything is zero sum. Leftist governments are either sacred, sacred or satanic. Governments on the right are either divine or diabolical. So as a journalist, I would take this whole movement toward democratic versus anti undemocratic more seriously if I thought people in New York, for example, were as willing to believe that left-wing governments in Latin America can be just as abusively authoritarian as right-wing governments can be, and if I thought people in here in Miami were as willing to believe that right-wing governments can be just as abusively authoritarian as left-wing governments can be. But my experience as a journalist is they aren't. They aren't willing. In Miami, for example, too many people expect journalists to use all our energies identifying los izquierdistas, the Cubas, the Venezuelas, the Nicaraguas, the Troikas of tyranny, right? Of course, these regimes are monstrous, and I say so strongly and frequently in my reports and commentaries. But they aren't, as popular opinion would have it here, the only cancers metastasizing in Latin America. Because the exile political complex, as I call it in Miami, is so invested in demonizing only the left, it is almost tab taboo in this community, especially for journalists, to mention los derechistas in, Lat in Latin America. Jair Bolsonaro in Brazil, or Jimmy Morales when he ran Guatemala, or recently extradited Juan Orlando Hernandez when his corrupt and authoritarian rule was running Honduras into the ground, and helping push tens of thousands of migrants to the U.S. border. So here is where I do find myself lining up with the democratic versus anti-democratic crowd. I see it as my job to remind folks that one of the most valuable ideas in political science is horseshoe theory. The proposition that anti-democratic leaders of the left or the right end up looking monstrously the same. And at that point, yes, the right and left labels don't matter so much anymore. I remember a couple years ago when Bernie Sanders made his gaffe about communist Cuba. It's unfair to say everything was bad under Fidel, remember? I wrote a commentary that pointed out one of the ugliest thing about Sanders' remark was the hypocrisy of it. The fact that he once lambasted conservatives like William Buckley, who suggested it was unfair to say everything was bad under Augusto Pinochet's right-wing dictatorship in Chile. I said what both sides cluelessly miss is that there comes a point in regimes like Castro's and Pinochet's when their brutality erases whatever good things their respective ideologies might have brought to the scene. Uh, in Castro's case, for example, uh, free health care and education, or economic vitality in Pinochet's case. I got emails from lefties screaming, false equivalence, 
That's always their favorite rebuttal. And from right-wingers, of course, calling me a closet commie. But nothing makes me sleep better as a journalist knowing I've angered both those groups. But in the absence of that kind of tyranny, I still believe the media have just as much reason to focus on right and left as they have to focus on democratic and undemocratic. Take two recently elected South American leaders, for example. Conservative Ecuadorian President Guillermo Lasso and liberal Chilean President Gabriel Boric. Lasso took over during Ecuador's COVID-19 nightmare. We all remember those coffins lined up on the streets in Guayaquil, right? And he took a businessman's approach to making the country's struggling vaccine program more efficient. That, in turn, has helped Ecuador's economy recover more robustly. Who's to say his more right-leaning impulses didn't pay off in this instance? I need to convey that in my re reporting. Boric, meanwhile, is making Chile's democracy more inclusive, something the country's new constitution is certainly expected to do, which could make Chilean capitalism more inclusive and, in turn, Chile's economy even more robust. If so, who's to say his left-leaning impulses didn't pay off in this instance? I need to convey that in my reporting. As long as Lasso doesn't become another Bolsonaro, and as long as Boric doesn't become another Lopez Obrador, then yes, I think left and right still have a place in what I do as a journalist in the 21st century. Thank you.